Greetings all you MGTOW, PUAs, TFLs, incels, low and high level MGTOW, blue pill, purple pill, red pill, black pill. Oh god, this is ridiculous. You know what? We didn't do that for the feminists and we're not going to do it for you. And if you don't like being lumped all together under one label, even though you're identitarian and fail to realize that your MGTOW identifying group will always be measured by your loudest red pill raged voices, then I suggest you clean your house like Emperor Zephanorian commanded you to. <laughs> Welcome back, you human war monkeys. So it looks like my less than two week old channel has attracted the attention of the shit eating monkey. Oh, my apologies, the turd flinging monkey, because somehow that's more sanitary. So, turd monkey here with his unknown amount of subscribers, and yet I'm sure he's been on YouTube far longer than I have, decided to make a response video to my orange pill philosophy video where I introduce my satirically named philosophy which is actually a common sense approach to solving the divide between the sexes. Knowing how identitarians love their labels, I proceeded to call this common sense solution Orange Pill Philosophy. Knowing that it would attract the attention of MGTOW men seeking another point of view outside the MGTOW echo chamber. Once I had their attention, the plan was, and still is, to offer these men an alternative to MGTOW by debunking the philosophy that drives it through my satirical videos. In the orange pill video in question, along with my responses in the comments section, my Twitter feed, as well as a few live streams, I have publicly stated that orange pill philosophy was in fact a code name for common sense, and that I was hoping to help a few MGTOW men while at the same time troll the rather stupid ones who would not do their research and inevitably take me seriously. That's what this response video to Turd Monkey's response video is about today. I found my first idiot. <laughs> Oh, come no, on, no, he's no, eating no. his own shit. What the fuck? Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> My name is Zephanorian. Yeah, that name kind of sucks. I'm going to call you Rationalist Trademark Skeptic Trademark number 51. Now, I want to point out that number 51 here dedicated his channel, which has only been around for about a week. He has dedicated it to making anti MGTOW videos. So, out of all the Rationalist Trademark Skeptic Trademarks out there, he's the one breaking new ground, and he's not going to attack feminism or SJWs. No, he's going after MGTOW. Bold move, my friend. Well, much like a true MGTOW, Turd Eating Monkey goes straight out of the gate fueled on assumption. He immediately pegged me as a skeptic probably because of the suit and tie. I'm assuming he still has armored skeptic PTSD and the suit has obviously triggered my little MGTOW monkey friend. Well, Turd Eating Monkey, first off, let Daddy Zeph set you straight. I'm not a skeptic. If you did more than five minutes of research, you would have realized that nowhere have I ever claimed to be a skeptic. Not in my channel description, my videos, or their descriptions on Twitter. I don't even recall accidentally ever sneezing or warping any of my words by accident and skeptic just popping out. But much like how MGTOW assumes the worst in anything, especially when it comes to women, I knew this was bound to happen. I had already mentally prepared my response long before you were inspired to make a video response. So let me use small words and bright colors to explain this to you. My YouTube persona is based off of a mix between the elusive man from Mass Effect and the alien portion of my character represents my view on humanity as if I'm separated from humanity in order to better observe it by removing any human-centric thought processes. No worries, I don't actually think I'm an alien. It's simply a self-aware state of mind and perception. Kind of like pretend. You remember pretend, right? Oh good, good. Now we can address your second assumption which seems to be born of fear. You seem to think that I have dedicated my YouTube channel to quote unquote, go after MGTOW. 
While that may be par for the course right now, since there seems to be no shortage of idiots at the moment, I will also be going after other forms of lunacy and stupidity when the opportunities present themselves. But for now, it looks like MGTOW YouTubers such as yourself are the low-hanging fruit that just keeps giving. Now, if by your specific definition, trying to reach out to men trapped in your echo chamber, aka support group, is quote-unquote going after MGTOW, then yes, I'll be doing that for quite some time, whenever I'm not distracted with another topic. With that being said, let's address your mild threat. Bold move, my friend. I would like to say that I'm impressed, but I can't take your beta male attempt at dominance too seriously since, let's face it, you're afraid of the opposite sex. The imagery of the red pill versus the blue pill is from the Matrix, you may not be aware of this. Yep, I am fully aware that it comes from the Matrix. The very concept and idea of an orange pill should have alerted you to the fact that this was satire to begin with. But let's continue. There is no orange pill. By just assigning your thing a color without any context is stupid. Now are you taking the red pill and mixing it with something yellow? urine perhaps to make your orange pill let's find out okay so apparently this guy is really really dense we're gonna go ahead and just move past this this has been explained any trips at the starting line migtow is not political it is a personal philosophy perhaps even a movement of men who subscribe to the same personal philosophy but adapted to their own needs you're thinking of the men's rights movement. Any movement, no matter how individual you claim it to be, becomes political the moment the identitarians in that movement seek political and social change that is external to themselves. If what you just asserted was not 100% disingenuous, then MGTOW men would go their own way without creating YouTube channels seeking to convince or convert other men, young and old, to become MGTOW. Like I said before, you're very dense. MGTOW is not about some gynocentric elites puppeteering society. You're thinking of, I don't know, I guess the alt-right version of the Jewish conspiracy, like Jews are controlling the banks which control the country and it's all this globalist elite stuff. So apparently my rather sarcastic satire flew right over your head. I should really watch out for this in the future as I can't expect everyone to have a firm grasp on subtlety or nuance. I think it's obvious that our world is not run by gynocentric elites. I was being sarcastic towards the MGTOW assertion that our society is gynocentric which ultimately influences how we choose to treat women in society, which in turn affects the laws that we create. If you missed the sarcasm in that statement, then you may miss anything and everything I'll ever say, if it's not laid out in black and white terms for easy interpretation. So you agree in the actual MGTOW definition of gynocentrism, which is the disparity against men and women in favor of women. But you choose not to believe in your straw man version of MGTOW, which involves some global elites. Okay, don't believe your straw man version of MGTOW because it's not even MGTOW in the first place. Once again, that would only be a straw man if I was actually being serious about having gynocentric elites running the world. I could spend the next hour talking about how gynocentrism borders the realm of conspiracy theory given how some MGTOW present that very issue. But I'd rather not hear your hour-long diatribe of hashtag not all MGTOW. So let's move on. It's actually about men rejecting the roles they've been given by gynocentric society and finding their own meaning through self-actualization. So who's running this gynocentric society? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We're moving on. We're moving. I'm being sarcastic. Being sarcastic. How that fucks anyone? I guess we're fucking them out of our labor and our sacrifice, but it's actually empowering to the individual MGTOW to find meaning in their own life beyond that which has been assigned to them by society which isn't there to benefit them, but to benefit women and society itself. Right, because fuck society and fuck the opposite sex. What's next? Are you going to tell me about societal gender roles and... Oh fuck, I'm dealing with feminism again. Again, you acknowledge the bias family court system. You acknowledge the dangers endemic to modern relationships. But then just sweep it aside. Why? That's kind of the point. So based on your logic, I'm supposed to become MGTOW, then I wouldn't be sweeping it aside. No. The men's rights activists are actually making headway with men's rights. Just because you don't see change immediately right now, 
Within the next 10 minutes or 10 years, it doesn't mean that those changes are not happening. I think you're looking for more of a radical change. Sort of a revolution. And in your mind, MGTOW is that revolution. Oh god, so now you've gone from strawmanning MGTOW to strawmanning hypergamy. Hypergamy does not dictate all women do anything. Hypergamy is an instinct that all women do possess, which compels them to seek the best mate with the most resources in order to provide for their future children. I didn't straw man hypergamy. I straight out made a claim that it's no more than a social scientific theory which is absolutely fluid and applying to both men and women. I asserted that if hypergamy is not just female-centric, then MGTOW's basis for distrusting and hating women and passively seeking their extinction is not only illogical but absolute maniacal lunacy. And don't for one second tell me that you or other MGTOW don't hate women on that level, not after you said this. It doesn't mean women won't live in this society, but realistically, if humanity could reproduce asexually using technology, there really wouldn't be a need for a weaker, dumber version of men. And for a second I thought you might have actually been a challenge. I could slam dunk you right there, but let's continue. The reason why MGTOW slut shame women for lack of a better term for riding the cock carousel is very simple. You see, men are valued by women for their ability to provide resources and utility. Women are valued by men for sex. Now that's very interesting, apparently you must know me better than I know myself. Because all those times where I was seeking affection, seeking companionship, and all the other things in between, it turns out all I was really trying to do was fuck. You're an idiot. You make boisterous claims, and you have no evidence to back them up. You can't make claims without actually having the data to back up your claims. And you also should stop making assumptions as well. I also want to point out that the cock carousel is assumed. Another assumption. You can't use personal testimony in place of scientific data or statistics. Unless you're keeping track personally of every single person's life or sex life I should say, then you are making a presumptuous claim that has no basis in reality. Stop watching porno and thinking that the women on the screen are the women that are next door. The more sexual partners a woman has, the lower her sexual marketplace value. A man can have several partners that it really doesn't make a difference to a woman, as long as he can provide resources and utility to that woman. So once again you make a boisterous claim that is born of assumption. You fail to provide any citation or data to back your assertions. So in turn, if those are the rules for our little soiree across the dance floor of debate, then allow me to make some assumptions of my own. Assumption number one, which I will call a malt. A-M-A-L-T. I assert that if a Walt, all women are like that, then in turn, all MGTOW are like that. And if playing by the MGTOW rules of debate, I can make the aforementioned assumption providing no real data to back it up other than personal testimony and emotional antidote, which goes like, Having personally seen my neighbor lose everything she had because her husband traded up for a real sex doll, Cheetos, and a lifetime of masturbating to free pornography, all the free pornography that he can get his hands on. My testimony is proof that a MGTOW are like all MGTOW are like that, especially when I go online and I see that there are other women out there with the same testimony. It just makes it all real, that there must be some kind of patriarchy. Oh. This is starting to sound familiar, isn't it? Just swap the vagina for a penis when thinking of MGTOW and you'll discover that we still have to deal with another group of batshit crazy bitches. Don't you just love assumption? Assumption that presumes to oversimplify the complexities of human interaction into a neatly quantified generalization which permits behavior beneficial to specifically one gender, either male or female. Contrasted feminism and MGTOW, you still have your batshit crazy bitches. So this is why men who sleep around don't really gain a bad reputation, they don't necessarily slam the door on future prospects for partners. What? Men don't gain a bad reputation? So does that mean that I can walk through hell while wearing gasoline underwear and experience no real social consequences? Not from my family, my girlfriend, or anyone else? 
Are you telling me that this entire time I could have been cheating on my girlfriend and since you assert that she is subhuman, or basically an emotionless flesh robot that has no feelings, then I could have been having my cake and eating it too? Hmm. Then I wonder why she freaked the fuck out when I came home late the other night. I don't recall any chores or tasks that needed to be completed by midnight. Weird. Like seriously, she must have been acting when her eyes were bloodshot red with actual tears forming and dropping out of those robotic emotionless eyes. I guess she was just trying to manipulate me then, you know, to get those resources out of the ATM which is my penis. But that doesn't make sense. Lately she's been paying for everything. Maybe I should just leave her, you know, to be sure. You're a fucking idiot. However, when women sleep around, the more sexual partners a woman has, the lower her sexual marketplace value. This is why nobody wants to marry porn stars. No shit, Sherlock. Women do get stigmatized for, say, having the same sexual freedom that you do. There are many factors for this, like a diverse cultural stigma that is heavily influenced by several religions. The type of religions or cultures that don't exactly correlate too well with the hypergamous nature of all human beings and not just one gender. What's next? Are you going to assert that women don't actually have to breathe? Yeah, gay men cheat on each other, gay men break up, they do all the things that normal relationships do, they just don't do it based on hypergamy. Lesbian couples have babies through artificial insemination, gay couples adopt. So how does this disprove hypergamy? It doesn't. But you sound rather confused. It disproves and absolutely decimates the MGTOW rendition of hypergamy which is primarily applied to females in their relation to partnering with men. You seem to have missed the point. Again, my argument was that if women and men could overcome their hypergamous nature in relation to the opposite sex, then the existence of the LGBT community would challenge the MGTOW assumption of a gynocentric society, especially with more and more men and women revealing their inherent bisexual nature which alone would decimate the MGTOW version of the female-centric hypergamy. How many times do I have to spell this out for you? Get with it. So if science itself can't come up with a conclusive reason why people are gay, why are you holding that against MGTOW? Like MGTOW has to come up with something. I mean, I can throw out my theory. People like what they like. Some people are really into fat chicks. Some people like to pretend they're babies. Some people are furries. Who fucking knows where it all comes from? Sex is weird. Wait, what? You're claiming that there has been no scientific studies concerning homosexuality. I mean, I understand you spend most of your time in your MGTOW safe space echo chamber, but you cannot be this disconnected from reality. Homosexuality among men and women have been studied for quite some time. Your claim and assumption is lazy and devoid of any intelligence. For starters, the American Society of Human Genetics, ASHG, you may not have heard of them, I'm sure, or the National Cancer Institute and their discovery regarding the gay gene, or better yet, Eric Valane's lab at UC, or William Rice at UC Santa Barbara, concerning the epigenetics playing a role in sexual orientation. You also seem to be throwing out the studies, myths, art, poetry that have come from an entire human history and interest in sexuality. Specifically, the last 60 years of scientific psychological studies regarding a vast array of philias and fetishes. Wait. I have to realize I'm not talking with someone using all mental faculties, even if I printed out every single research paper concerning the scientific studies on the gay gene or human sexuality, you would never read them. You'd rather spend your time eating Lay's potato chips, masturbating, and playing video games while the adults are doing all the reading. On second thought, you probably have already stopped the video the first minute or so because you didn't hear HAIL MGTOW. Well, at least your viewers are in here, so I'm sure it's traumatizing for them to see their favorite shit-eating monkey getting probed by a condescending alien that disagrees with them. And concerning your viewers who are downvoting my videos and crying in my comment section, cry all you like. When I make a video, the video is the last word. Man up. Man up. That's the orange pill. God. Don't tell me what to do. God. I don't really know what I was expecting, honestly. I was expecting something. I mean, after all that, after all this production quality, your solution basically boils down to man up. 
be the best man you can be and attract a good woman. God. I am disappoint. I am disappoint 51. Reduction quality. <laughs> Oh god, this guy's a fucking idiot. <laughs> you sound, you sound just like Napoleon Dynamite. I'm sorry, I had to break character. You sound like Napoleon Dynamite. Oh god, you're so stupid. I actually was thinking I was going to have a challenge on my hands. Oh, this is pathetic. I mean, I hate to break it to you, but your orange pill, your original philosophy isn't original at all. It's literally what I hear from every single traditionalist. Period. Prager you, all of them. This is all it is. This is all traditionalism is. It's man up. Do the best you can for your wife and your children and for society, even if you get nothing in return. Eh, whatever. You're just a man. That's what you're here for. Just man up. <laughs> I think we're going to end it there. He continues on for a few more sentences, expressing his concern for my satirical orange pill that he seems to still be taking seriously. I guess some folks don't know how to separate the joke from the presented information. But even so, I will end this video with, This has been your dose of orange pill. Remember to unfairly screw my like and dislike ratio the same way your ex-wives unfairly screwed you. Also, subscribing to my channel is the best way to protect your resources. I can't back that up with any factual evidence, but I will make that claim anyways. In addition to that, please leave your red pill rage therapeutic cry sessions in my comments. There's nothing I enjoy more than watching grown human men having rather public emotional breakdowns. It's almost entertaining. And for you, my beloved turd-eating monkey, this has been your dose of Orange Suppository. Take care.